Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to learn how to do SVG path morphing in React using Motion, formerly known as Framer Motion. And SVG path morphing is where we have various SVG paths or shapes that we want to transition or smoothly morph into one another. And in order to do that, we're going to be leveraging a library called Flubber, which you can see here. I have the NPM page up. And we're going to be using Flubber to create a better result when we do this SVG path morphing. So you can see here in this before and after example how much smoother that morphing is after using Flubber. So the problem really comes when we're trying to morph between paths that don't correspond very well to each other. And so that nice smooth path morphing is difficult to achieve just using motion alone. Now, the code example for this video pretty much comes from Motion and Flubber's documentation, and this is the result that it produces. And you can see these SVG paths nicely morphing into each other, and you can also see that their fill colors are smoothly transitioning between each other. Now, if you want to get the path data for these SVGs, you can come over to Flubber's documentation, and if you scroll down on the page, you can click here on Morphing SVG Paths, and if I right click, I can do View Page Source, and you'll find those SVG paths here. And in my code, I've put those into a separate file called paths.js, and you can see those various paths are assigned here and exported so that we can import them into our main path morphing file and loop through them. All right, so with that little overview, let's dive into our code and see exactly how this is working. Okay, let's go back to our browser tab. And I like to start out by looking at the JSX that we're returning. So what we've got is an SVG path element. And we've prepended the path element with the motion dot, which turns it into a motion animatable path. And on this path, we're dynamically updating the fill and D props. So since this is an SVG element, we use fill instead of background color to create the color for the element. And D is for the path data which are those path data strings that we saw a moment ago. So our whole mission is to dynamically update these fill and path values, and to do so in a way where when they change, they do so smoothly. Now, the main driver of this animation is this animate function here inside of our use effect. And this animate function comes from motion, and we're using it here because it allows us to write our code in a more imperative way as opposed to the more declarative syntax that Motion usually uses. Now, this animate function is very versatile in that we can set it up in different ways. But in this case, we're using it to pass it single values. And those values are a progress value and a path index value. And we can say that the progress value is the from value, and the path index value is the to value. So we're animating from the progress value to the path index value. But what are these values, progress and path index? Well, these values are initialized here. So path index is a piece of state that we're setting up, and we're initializing it to a value of 0. Now progress is also initialized to a value of 0 by way of the path index value. As you can see, we're passing it in here. However, we're using the useMotionValue hook in order to set this up as a motion value. And what that's going to do is, as motion is animating that progress value, setting it up as a motion value is going to allow us to get access to all of the interpolated values. And we'll see really what that means in a minute and why it's useful. But first, let's jump back into our use effect. So what's going to happen first is the component's going to mount, and this use effect is going to run, and it's going to call this animate function. And when it calls it at first, progress is going to be at zero. Path index is also going to be at zero. So the very first time, we'll be animating from the value of zero to zero. And of course, that's not going to do anything at first, because the first time, when the page loads, we just want to see the first path, which is that lightning bolt. See if I refresh the page? So we're saying, OK, animate from 0 to 0 over a duration of 0.8 seconds using this easing curve, ease in out. And then, once that 0.8 seconds is up, fire this oncomplete function. And we're going to talk about what this oncomplete function does. 
But first, what I want to show you is that those path strings that we imported, I've put them here in an array called paths, and we also have an array of hex codes for our colors. Okay, so on complete, essentially what this is doing is it's checking whether or not we've gotten to the last element in our paths array, because if we have, we're going to reset our progress and our path index. Otherwise, we're going to increment our path index. And this incrementing of the path index is what allows us to move through the paths array, as well as the various colors in the colors array. Now let's jump back up to the top of our code, and let's look at how exactly the fill and the path are getting generated. Notice here that for both fill and path, we're using Motion's use transform hook. And what use transform does is it allows us to take an input array of values and map that to an output array of values. So let's start by looking at fill. For this use transform, we're passing in the progress value. And remember, the progress value is the one that's being animated. Now the next thing that's passed into this use transform is that input array of values that I was talking about. And what we're doing to get the input array of values is we're mapping over our paths array, which is this one down here, which contains seven elements. And this mapping is simply a way to get the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as an array. Right? Remember that arrays are zero based. So we have 0, 1, 2, and so on, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what we want to do is we want to map that array of numbers to those various hex codes in our colors array. And it's important to note that the input range array and the output range array that you use with the use transform, these need to be equal in length. And you can see that they are. We have seven paths and we have seven colors. So what's happening here is that use transform is taking that progress value, which is continually changing because it's being animated, and it's mapping that to the corresponding color from the colors array. But keep in mind that it's continually interpolating between these hex code color values. So although it initially starts at this value, as the progress value continues to animate, this green color is smoothly transitioning into the blue color, which is the second color in the array. And then once it gets to the blue color, that's going to smoothly transition to the purple, and so on. So now if we look at path, we can see that it operates in very much the same way, again using the use transform hook, and first passing in that progress value, just like we did for the fill. And for the input range for this, we're using the same approach that we did for the fill, where we mapped over the paths array just simply to return the index numbers. But here, instead of our output range being the colors array, it's now the paths array, right? which is this array containing those path strings. There's only one difference, though, and this is where Flubber steps in. And that's in this fourth options argument that we're passing in, where you can see we're using Flubber's interpolate function. So in the case of the fill, we didn't pass in any fourth argument because we said motion can handle the interpolation between the color values. However, as we said at the beginning of this video, when interpolating between different paths, especially paths that are very different from each other, relying on motion alone won't produce the results that we're looking for. So just as an example, let's say that we remove this fourth argument. We'll just put it down here and comment it out for a second just so we can see the difference. So now let's save and let's see how our animations look. And you can see they look all crazy and jagged. Right, but if we go ahead and we put that fourth argument back in, well now we're back to our smoothly animated paths. All right, so let's focus in on this fourth argument and see how it works. What we have is a mixer property, and you can think of this sort of like a plugin. Right, so in this case, our plugin is Flubber, and in particular, it's the interpolate function. And this interpolate function, it takes the current path and it takes the next path. And that's what A and B is. So in other words, when we're on the lightning path, this is going to be A, and the hand path is going to be B. And then on the next iteration, hand is going to be A, and plane is going to be B, and so on. And so it's creating these interpolations between each of these pairs. And this interpolate function, this returns an interpolator. 
And that interpolator gets past the progress value from the use transform. But essentially, all that we're doing here is we're saying, instead of having motion do the interpolation for this use transform, let's use our Flubber plugin, so to speak, to do the interpolation. In this max segment length property, that's like an additional tweak, which lets us adjust the smoothness of the morphing. So these lower values will produce smoother results, but are a little bit more taxing. So as a little bit of a recap, ultimately what we're doing is we're animating this progress value, and that progress value is sort of acting as a source of truth, because both the fill and the path rely on it. And because we're plugging that into these use transforms, those progress values are mapping our input array to our colors array, and then in this case, our input array to our paths array. Also, it's definitely important to mention that path index, when it does get incremented, well, you can see here, it's being passed into the dependency array of use effect. And so when this gets updated, the use effect will be rerun. And other than that, notice that we also are doing a cleanup function in our use effect, where we're calling the stop method on our animation.